In this second tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this writing on type effect. Again it works well with lined logos um, and thanks to Jabber Gaming for letting me use his logo to demonstrate. So as always the first thing we're going to need to do is bring in a fusion composition. To find your fusion comp if you don't know where it is come up to the top of the screen where it says effects library, click on it to make sure it's, your effects library is open, click on effects and then you find fusion composition. Drag that onto your timeline. And then we will go into fusion. Okay the first thing we need is our logo and I'm going to bring that in using a loader node. Shift spacebar and type loader. And we get our loader node with this dialog box that pops up. Search to wherever your logo is and bring it in. We can get rid of that merge node because we don't need it. Now for this way of animating your logo this is only actually a, a template we won't actually be using this in the final product what we will be doing is adding some masked ellipses to get the circles and then we will be using the paint node to draw the lines what that lets us do is animate the various elements on and off much like the last video, there's going to be quite a lot of repetitive stuff in this, so I'll do it once and then speed up for the other two, other three parts. So, first thing we're going to need is a background. So bring in a background node. And we're going to need a couple of ellipses. So if you bring in one ellipse, bring in two ellipse and then take the grey box into the blue arrow for each and then if we view our background node we've just got what appears to be one circle but don't worry it will become two. First thing we're going to need to do is change the colour so I know that this is pure red but if it's not pure red what we can do if you check your background node come up to colour and just click and hold the eyedropper and bring it over the colour that you want your background to be and it will pick it up like so. So next we're going to need to position our ellipses. So I'm going to put one here and one here. So select your first ellipse. If you click either, either viewer will do it but you need to click at the 45 degree angle point not vertical and horizontal so 45 degrees click and hold and just drag it in to reduce the size of your circle now again using our PNG as a template if you zoom in you can then position your circle where you need it and shrink it to the appropriate size like so and we'll do the same with our other circle so select your second ellipse now it's probably easy to do it in your second viewer shrink it down and start to move it until you can see it here and then we will position it where we need it about that, bring it in a smidge. So we now have our two red circles. The next part we're going to need is the line and to get the line we're going to use a paint node. So bring in another background underneath. Now this background we're going to make transparent so come over to your inspector and just drop the alpha to zero. 
Next we're going to come to the paint node, which is also on your hotbar, bring that in and connect the output of your background to the yellow input of the paint node. Now just while we're working I'm going to bring in my reference and I'm going to merge them like so and now I can put that into a viewer. Nothing appears to have changed. But if I now select my paint node, come up into the viewer, you can see you've got these various icons along the top. You want this one, the polyline stroke. So click it and then we come down and we're going to draw a line that goes around this element. So start in the middle and at this stage you don't need to be massively accurate. As you can see by default the poly or the paint node and the polyline tool are white which makes it nice and easy to see roughly what we're doing. Like so. So next we're going to come to the inspector we're going to open the brush controls and we're going to select the second circular brush shape. Coincidentally, for this example, the default size of the brush is the same size as my line. So that makes life a bit easier. If it's not, you can just adjust the size here. So the next thing we're going to need to do is add some curves to this line. So in the viewer, if you don't do that, click on modify only. That stops you adding more points. Now you can select your points. Actually, you need to select the whole thing and then we can con command or control select so press and hold the command key and select the points that you want to have curves on like so and then hit the second row here the curve smooth control and you get your line smoothed out now you need to come in and start playing with the points to get your line where you want it. You can move these handles individually by holding down the command key until you get your line to look something like we want it. And what you're trying to do is follow your outline as close as you can. Again, it doesn't need to be spot on because the template will go. And all you'll be left with is your line. And if there's nothing for them to reference against, they don't know that you've got it a bit wrong. But get it as close as you can. selected. And you're going around and just tweaking and play until you get everything sort of, as I say, as lined up as you can. It doesn't need to be spot on accurate, but just as close as you can get it.
like so. So once you have that in place, you can disconnect your merge. And if we now merge our two dots and our paint node and put that into viewer two, you can see we now have our first element again in your paint node you can change the colour so select your paint node grab your eyedropper and pick your colour okay so now we're basically going to repeat that for the other three elements so each element will have two ellipse nodes into a background a transparent background and a paint node and I will now, like Billy Whiz, complete the other ones. OK, so we've got our four elements. We no longer need this reference so we can delete it and what we're going to do now is we're going to merge each of these elements together so from the first merge node onto the next merge node onto the next merge node onto the next merge node and if we now pipe this into our media out we get to see our full logo Next we're going to animate the whole shebang and we're going to start off by animating our first ellipse which is here and we are going to go to frame 6 which is where we want this circle to be full size we're going to come to width and height and set keyframes on both. No I'm not, an easier way of doing it is if you right click on the word height choose expression and then drag from this little plus sign over the word width what that's done is it's tied the height to the width so if you adjust the width the height will follow it so that being said keyframe on width at frame six go back to frame zero and just drop width to zero and you can see heights come down with it So next we're going to have half a second, no we're going to have a second, so 6 add 24 is 30, we're going to come to frame 30, we're going to select our paint node, our paint 1 node, this is this path here, we're going to open stroke controls and you've got this right on property which does just that. So at frame 30, we're going to keyframe it. We're going to go back to frame 6. And we're going to drop it all the way to 0, like that. And then we're going to animate this last circle. So come to frame 30. Select your second ellipse, which is this one. And again, you want it over six frames, so come to frame 36. We're going to do the same expression and tie the height to width. And we're going to keyframe width at frame 36. If you come back to frame 30 and drop it, drop width to zero. So now if you watch this middle element, what you've got is it will the dot appears and it writes on and then the end dot appears. And we're going to do the same for the other elements. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger it though. So instead of the next circle coming in at 0 to frame 6, it will come in at frame 6 to frame 12 you'll then have 24 frames for the line to 36 and then 36 to 42 will be the other dot 
and we'll stagger it up the line for each of the elements so that they are all delayed slightly. I will see you on the other side. So there you have your completed animation. Now what I would do on the edit tab is I would then fade that out rather than animating it out. If you want to animate it out you can, it's just about keyframing basically in reverse to what we've just done. Um, but yeah, I'd fade it out personally. So if we come back into the edit tab and give it a second. And away you go with your right on logo. Hope that was helpful, hope it made sense. Um, as always, please, please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers! I've just done... I haven't done a little tutorial without...